Hello everybody and welcome back to the Dragon's Library. Let's get right into it. Today I am reviewing the latest film from the legendary Studio Ghibli, The Boy and the Heron. Now, this film was written and directed by the masterful Hayao Miyazaki and it's his first full film in a decade. So as you can imagine, I was so hyped for this movie. It was indescribable the emotions I had when I went to go see this. For those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, well, first off, you probably don't watch much animation outside of Disney or DreamWorks. So, let's get those viewers some context. Studio Ghibli is a Japanese animation studio that has, without exaggeration, produced some of the greatest works of art in the history of animation as a medium. Movies such as Spirited Away, Castle in the Sky, and Princess Mononoke among several others, were all made by Studio Ghibli from the 1980s through to the mid-2000s. While I don't often expect many normal people to know about anime movies, even if anime has become more common, Studio Ghibli has always kind of been the exception. Even in the early days of anime, when they got limited releases for Japanese anime movies, and these were like rare to non-existent, you know, unique showings, Studio Ghibli still got full American releases for their movies. In fact, Spirit Away, widely regarded as the studio and the director's best work, is the only non-English movie to ever win the Academy Award for Best Animated Picture. And that year, it was up against Disney's Lilo and Stitch and Treasure Planet. Basically, Studio Ghibli was Japan's version of Disney, though only really as a film studio and not the massive corporation Disney has become. So the studio coming out with a new 2D hand-drawn film from their famed director after a decade since Miyazaki's last big film release, this was a big deal. Now with the context out of the way, let's go on to how good this movie is, because it is very good. Set during the Pacific War, the studio follows a young boy named Mahito, whose mother dies in a fire and who then leaves Tokyo. His father moves him to a family home near his factory and marries his wife's younger sister. Still haunted by his mother's death and frustration towards his new stepmother slash aunt, Mahito encounters a talking heron who taunts him while beckoning the boy towards a mysterious tower built by Mahito's great-granduncle. Despite the resisting these taunts, Mahito's stepmother mysteriously goes missing and the boy must venture into the tower to save her, crossing through the fantastical worlds within in the process. Now before we discuss the characters or themes, I just need to gush about the animation. This is a hand-drawn movie. You are that way. Hand-drawn. It is 124 minutes of some of the most breathtaking animation I have ever seen. Even if the plot was complete garbage, which it is most certainly not, the visuals alone could make most average films look like shit in comparison. In particular, there was a horrifying visual at the beginning as Mahito runs towards the burning building that's just... Wow. I have never seen fire look quite so horrifyingly beautiful. So... Yeah, this thing looks beyond amazing. We've established that. But how does the plot hold up? I think it's pretty good, actually. Not the best Studio Ghibli story. I think that would probably either be Nausicaa in the Valley of the Wind or Spirit Away, one of the two. They're both really, really good for me. However, it does do some interesting things. In contrast to many of Studio Ghibli protagonists, who are happy and upbeat, Mahito has a quiet anger to him at the start of the film. In the beginning, I thought he was a spoiled little brat, but as you soon see, his anger is from both grief at the loss of his mother and resentment towards his stepmother as a sort of replacement. But even in that anger, he seems to push it down and suppress it, for the most part, bottling it up, until causing him to lash out at the heron's taunts. As he travels through the other world, the determination to rescue his stepmother grows into an acceptance of her as his new parent. Interestingly, according to the article from The Hollywood Reporter, the film is apparently based on Miyazaki's own life and childhood. The article even has the following quote from a Japanese magazine called Cinemas Plus that I think sums it up pretty well. To understand the setting and the story deeply, you need to commit to watching it repeatedly while ruminating on the various scenes and analyzing Hayao Miyazaki as a person, the outlet said, while also noting similarities between The Boy and the Heron story and Miyazaki's own biography. Now, I'm not extremely well-read on Miyazaki's own personal life. I did some basic reading up for this, and you can see that he, you know, moved away from Tokyo early on in his childhood, that kind of thing. And I can definitely see the parallels. However, I am not an expert on that, and while I would love to talk to you about some of the other characters and themes, honestly, I think you should just go watch it yourself. This is a pretty short review for me, but I just think this isn't the kind of film you need to explain to you. It's amazing, it's gorgeous, it's beautiful, it has a heartwarming story. Just go see it already. In fact, this is not a suggestion. 
I am not just recommending you watch this movie. I am outright ordering everyone who sees this video to go to your theater if it is still in theaters and see this immediately. If there are no showings where you live, then find out where it's going to be streaming. Studio Ghibli's other movies are on HBO Max, for those of you who don't know, so I would check there in a few months. And when it comes out, watch it immediately. It might finally get an HBO Max subscription out of me, at least. So, obviously, this gets an easy 10 out of 10. It's an amazing work of animation, and quite frankly, it's stupid that both the Japanese movies that have come out this year, this and Godzilla Minus One, are better than, like, 90% of the stuff that's come out this year. Seriously, what the hell? Also, what a great year for animation. We've got this, Spider-Verse, and Suzume. Just fantastic. My mind is just blown. So, uh, yeah. Moving on from there, we have the announcements. Hello, everybody. I'm still working on my review of The Iron Flame. Only finally just gotten the book finished up. I was taking a while. I've been busy with other stuff. So, in addition to that, I am currently streaming Alan Wake 2 on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 7.30 p.m. And I am going to be playing another game, Chance of Sonar, in my free time and reviewing that sometime, hopefully, this month. In addition to all of those, in the January of next year, I think, I'm going to have my you know, 2023 best of videos all come out. So look forward to that in the next few weeks. I'm going to be working on all that along with some new art assets for the show because I like to fresh things up near the end of the year slash beginning of next year. Finally, we have the end card. There's a subscribe board. Go to my channel and subscribe to me a ton. There's a video YouTube recommends and a playlist of all the stuff I've done this year. Check both of those out. Go watch some more of my stuff. And I will see you all next time. Bye.